Welcome back, everybody, to the Tried of the Force podcast, a podcast from Puerto Rican friends coming together to do deep dives into Star Wars and other nerd-related media. This is season five, and I know we're a little bit late to the game, but we are still very, very much excited to talk about the newly released trailer of The Acolyte. Um, Goose, probably even more so than me, because you've been waiting to talk about it, what, since last summer, Star Wars Celebration yeah. London, when you got to see yeah. a version of the final official trailer <laughs> it's been it's been a while it's been an yeah. arduous journey i know that i have been uh taunting you uh, yeah. or teasing mm -hmm. whatever word you want to <laughs> use about this trailer and this show for a very long time and yeah finally finally, finally we got it finally we got it that's a surprise because i wasn't expecting that we were gonna get it it was kind of like a like a like a drop that lucasfilm just uh, yeah. put out without really any warning. They first did that amazing teaser poster of uh, which is insane. The poster is it's just right, gorgeous. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. To an to an extent, I didn't. And after the trailer dropped, they released a new poster, which honestly I feel like the official poster was not. I mean, it was it was a, it was a <laughs> nice poster. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't have the gravitas and it didn't have the power of that teaser poster that they released the day before with the, you know, with the High Republic Jedi hilt and then yep. just the blood smeared the over of blood. it. Uh, yeah. I was just like, yep. damn, this uh, is good. Yeah. Uh, be be uh, what did you think of the poster before going into the trailer? Like, what, what, what vibes were you getting off of it? Because I tried very hard to not tell you a lot about the Acolyte trailer that dropped in yeah. Star Celebration last year. To, you know, have you come in fresh. Have an it. actual honest reaction to it. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, we got the teaser trailers, a uh, teaser uh, poster. Poster so first. What, yeah. what did you think of that poster before going into like the trailer? Massive goosebumps, honestly. I, it was just like so simplistic, but there's mo so much depth to it. Just like using the blood smear to represent the actual lightsaber um there's just it's so straight to the point and there's so many dark undertones to mm -hmm. it that i remember that when they first announced the acolyte they were talking about this whole like dark undertones and that it's you know about this kind of rise of the darkness at the end of the high republic but you know how concepts can change over time and editing happens and rewrites happen and we were mm -hmm. i don't think 100 percent sure of what we were going to get and then that teaser poster came out it's like oh yeah oh yeah they're definitely keeping it dark i am so in for this and the and the tagline on it too the in an age of light a darkness, darkness rises. rises which which to me you know like Ooh. i mean the tagline on itself you know was awesome but to me it always gave me a force awakens vibes because mm. i don't know you remember the teaser trailer for the force awakens a uh, when it's, it's well at the time we didn't know whose voice it was we knew it was Andy right. Serkis but we didn't know it was a uh, Snoke slash Palpatine right. <laughs> saying yeah. like uh, yeah what is it uh, the dark side of the Force whatever something like that and then end the light something like that and then <laughs> you know and then the Millennium Falcon shows up which now that I'm like recounting I'm like okay maybe the quote's not as similar <laughs> Acid, now but, that you think about it really yeah but it, it reminds me of like in the movies then like powerful light powerful dark that luke said that and then also a uh, snoke saying uh, i knew that as your power and the dark and uh, the dark side grew stronger that your equal in the light would also rise or some or something like that so mm -hmm. i'm just like okay obviously i don't think it's necessarily a parallel to the sequel trilogy but it's kind of you know nice to see how you know the the duality of the force is always in 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 the mix with all these things did you make any uh is it just me or did you make any connections to sequel trilogy uh with with that tagline or am i like dig or am i reaching too deep into the well i didn't really make any connections to it honestly i mean now that you mention it it kind of makes sense but i'm trying to see the acolyte as a standalone oh, yeah, in itself yeah. like so I don't think it's necessary to compare it with the sequels um, or, you know, get nostalgic about them because I really do think this is going to be something completely different, just a different tone 
Mm -hmm. and just like a different aesthetic and from the trailer we can already see that the fight scenes are like really clean Mm -hmm. which i really enjoy because one of the things as much as i loved obi-wan was that there were a lot of cut scenes in the fight scenes so sometimes it was like hard to keep track of everything that was happening and i'm i cut scenes like really annoy me so and shaky cam too I, i also hate shaky cam so the fact that everything looks really clean so far um makes me so excited to see mm-hmm. how it's how the fight scenes are going to be integrated into this general story of we don't really know that much so far no we only we only know that it's uh, a murder mystery basically and 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 kind of as a preface for like for those that like aren't that familiar with the uh, acolyte or the setting it's set a hundred years, I think, before the a uh, hundred years and some change, just to be generous, uh, before the events of the Phantom Menace in the tail end of what is called the High the Republic, High Republic, Republic. Yeah. which is supposed to be the reign, the era of the Jedi in which they were at their, you know, at their fullest peak of know, their powers, the peak yeah. of their powers, and mm-hmm. being the 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 height of uh, of the example of what a Jedi should be and it's a era that started a couple of years ago during covid with what was at at the time called the luminous project so people were like you know what is the luminous project what is this gonna be Uh, because everyone was like okay is this some jedi related thing because everyone made rightfully so the connection with yoda and his quote from the empire strikes back of luminous beings are we are we? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, okay, what does this have to do? Obviously, it has to be Jedi related because of the quote. But then when it was finally announced, it was like, holy crap. It's not what really anyone expected. And it's like this brand new era set uh, 300 or 400 years, something like that, in the past and unconnected to the Skywalker saga, finally. So it's a yeah. brand new place to tell really, really cool stories and a really cool publishing integrated publishing effort between comic books uh, novels uh, ya you know all this really really cool stuff that's uh, interconnected that was really really fun and it's still ongoing we're in phase three uh, so at the tail end of this publishing effort which has been really fun and the cool thing about this show though even though it's connected to that era it's still far away enough from the publishing yeah. effort to still kind of stand on its own we have some returning characters, obviously, and we'll talk about that a little later. But it's really fun. It's refreshing. It's what we've been talking about, right? That we want from Star Wars. New stories. New in a different era, not connect. I mean, obviously, we'll see, like I said, returning characters. But on the whole, yeah. like, it's, you know. It's a new story. Yeah. There's And there's and the cool thing about it is that there's consequence. You know, it's, uh, you know, that some characters might not make it. So yeah. we don't that, know where any of these characters end up really so except except like a couple but we'll talk about those yeah. couple later uh but yeah let's just let's just get let's get this party going the trailer did it live up to the hype that i was uh building up for you <laughs> building up for um it was better than i was expecting because when things are hyped i tend to think that it's not nearly as good as everybody's saying so i was kind of ex- Expecting to maybe not like it as much as I did so I was happily surprised when just I was it's so short what it's like a minute and a half or something mm, let me see let me see I yeah it's a minute it, and 47 seconds yeah so it's like a short trailer but I feel like they packed so much into it and you already have like without them really telling you anything you still have a sense of this just like foreboding atmosphere we don't know what's going on the jedi look completely confused about everything that's happening and i feel like that's going to be us as we're watching it just kind Mm -hmm. of taking it episode by episode and trying to figure out you know what's actually happening behind the story and and where the characters motivations are coming from and, and why they're killing jedi like we know now it's like a power struggle kind of situation but we don't know where it's stemming from we don't know Mm -hmm. the history of any of the characters i mean at least the ones that are completely new so it actually blew my mind and it's just it was star wars has been really well 
in trailers in general mm -hmm. because you know that I don't really like Very them true. that much because I feel like they tell you a lot of the story and I don't like I like being fresh when something starts. So they do a really good job of showing and not telling mm -hmm. and kind of giving you a sense of what the mood of the show is going to be without ruining the storyline. And I think it was a very nice, you know, first taste of what this show is going to be, which again was super unexpected. I thought they were going to do something maybe for May the 4th, but you know, now that we know that it's going to be released on June 4th with the two episode premiere, it makes sense for them to start giving us some stuff already in March. So mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to see. I, I hope they keep on this track if they're going to show us more that it's stuff that happens like in the first few episodes so it doesn't spoil anything and that we just keep getting more excited about what the show is going to be because I can't I can't wait to watch. Yeah, I think and you, I think you like said it exactly right. Lucasfilm has been has had a very good track record with giving very 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 good trailers, and especially trailers that not only, you know, showcase how great a show might look but also exactly like not giving away too much of yeah. what's going to happen in the future and like i think animation is the perfect uh, example of how lucasfilm kind of thrives with tv show trailers because you know uh, for the bad batch or the clone bad wars batch, season yeah. seven and stuff mm -hmm. like that they would the first trailer is always you know super bombastic and all these things but on the whole it's usually kind of like the first couple of episodes so you really are not that yeah. deep into the story to kind of start to figure out what's happening and i think in that regard this trailer does that same thing i'm pretty sure that exactly like all the scenes that we've seen are from maybe the first two maybe three episodes uh, so it's kind of like setting the gears in motion of what to expect in terms yeah. of the vibe and the inciting incident, right, which is like the the murder of Jedi, and yeah. it set up set set up enough of the characters, the mood, the setting, and 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 the plot to kind of get, get what your appetite. So I thought that was cool. <laughs> and, and and one of those things that it also does is like misdirect, and we'll talk about that because I'm pretty sure that the trailer has set up things for everyone to be you know, thinking that the story's gonna go one way when I'm sure that it's gonna go in a completely different direction. And we'll and we'll definitely talk about that. But uh, one reaction that I definitely want from you is two different things. I mean we'll talk about a lot of them, but two different okay. things. One, Harry Ann Moss okay. and that fight fight sequence that they teased yeah. in the trailer, which was very crouching tiger hidden dragon, you know, very uh, Asian, Asian uh, kung fu cinema type of thing. Yeah which was, you know, beautiful. So to kind of like see that finally brought back into Star Wars is amazing. And we saw a little yeah. bit with Ezra in, in Ahsoka and kind of fighting with the Force a little bit, but... Yeah, but was this not, was something else. Exactly. It, that did not <laughs> hold yeah. a candle to what this trailer yeah. showed us. So what did you think? So it's so cool because, I mean, as soon as they announced that Carrie and Moss was cast, I was really excited about it. I was actually rewatching um, the original Matrix last night just because we didn't have anything to watch. And I was like, she is so cool. Awesome. Like, it, it makes so much sense for her to be in Star Wars. So, I mean, at this point now we have her in some of the coolest stuff that we've seen. Her character in um, Daredevil is one of my favorites as well. So she is just, like, the badass. Um... I wasn't sure what character she was going to play. I wasn't expecting her to be a Jedi. I was kind of expecting her to be one of the dark side <laughs> characters, but we don't know. We don't know where her character is going to end up. So it could mm -hmm. be something else. It could be a complete um, turnaround that she's not really a Jedi um, or, you know, be a follower of mm -hmm. uh, Jedi principles. So it could be a complete red herring, but it was so cool to see her. Um, where are they wearing the Jedi garb? That fight scene is, is so beautiful like just even the few parts of it that we see i mean she doesn't even pull out a lightsaber the whole time mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. that we've seen she just uses the force to fight correct and like i said so far they look so clean and um and not overly choreographed like it feels like a real fight you know so mm -hmm. if that's just like a taste of what we're gonna get to see i'm all here for it uh, carrie animos is a vampire she looks exactly the same i love her <laughs> and i really can't wait to see what they do um with her character she is we know she's a jedi master right mm -hmm. dara yes so yes. it's yeah. yeah so it's great 
I can't. So, I can't and, and, and that's one of those things that I think is a misdirect, and we'll talk about that okay. after mm -hmm. like, our, we complete our <laughs> reaction mm -hmm. to the trailer. Because I think that her character and Amanda Seyfried's character, May, I think they're the big, at least to me, the ones mm -hmm. that we have to kind of keep an eye out for yeah. different reasons. Uh, but one and thing that the I Mad think... Last Stenberg. Oh. You said Siegfried. <laughs> completely different person. Yep. Sorry. Completely different person. <laughs> my bad. Names, not my forte. Uh, <laughs> So please correct me because I have a feeling <laughs> that I'm going to keep making this mistake. Uh, but um, the ending of the trailer is a little different to the ending of the trailer from Celebration. But it's still, I, I know that I was hyping it up to you by saying yeah. like, but otherwise it was do the, the same. Thing? If for the most part, I mean, there's a couple yeah. of things there are that are a little different. The beginning was kind of the same. The middle had some parts that were a little different. From what I vaguely remember. Remember, and, yeah. And the end was just kind of like an extended sequence, I would say, because the end in the original one ends gonna with do the thing. Exactly. Ends with are yeah. they gonna do the thing? And it's all the Jedi just igniting their lightsabers and then boom, the acolyte. Mm -hmm. And this one, it goes a little further from uh, actually pulled back before that from them igniting the lightsabers to a thing that Star Wars has been overdoing to death. But, and it still looks cool but as hell. Exactly. But Jesus <laughs> Christ, isn't it amazing? It's just a lightsaber is cutting down trees, mm -hmm. flying through a forest, and then bam, the mist a mysterious hand holding that lightsaber, and then all of these Jedi is charging at this person wielding a red lightsaber only to get their asses handed to them from some force wave push, whatever yeah. you want to call it. With oh. like a red undertone behind like the push. As well, so and then you close the trailer with the Disney Plus logo in red, to the sound of a lightsaber. So mm -hmm. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Um, I thought the red lightsaber was what you meant when you said they did the thing. Um, mm. So actually, both things were amazing. Just to see them all, you know, it's been a long time since we've seen that many Jedi together in one place. So that's one thing that's different from what we've been getting recently and to just see that they're basically there was like there was like at least 10 of them right and they get utterly destroyed by this one person wielding a red lightsaber and i also thought it was really interesting and really cool and in how i don't know how jedi culture changed but i thought it was noticeable that there were a lot of yellow lightsabers mm -hmm. and green lightsabers when the norm where we're used to it's like mostly blue lightsabers so do you think that has something to do with jedi philosophy yeah or... yeah yeah because they I'm... were more kind of in the middle back then and it wasn't as rigid as it became eventually or well in the high republic books uh for yeah. the no, i mean not for the most part but the high republic books have had like a plethora of uh, lightsaber colors. I mean, you have Orla Jereni, and she has like a double bladed a white lightsaber, okay. um, lots of yellow lightsabers. There's lots of people with purple lightsabers as well, which we only mm -hmm. saw one of in. Uh, yeah, because Samuel Jackson's in, 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 in the prequel lightsaber. In the prequel trilogy, exactly. <laughs> There's a lightsaber whip from a character called uh, Vernestra Rowe, which is a character is returning. Uh, from that is actually making the jump from the books into the the show the series okay yes. that's cool she's the she's the green one the bald green one that's ah, Vernestra. yeah so mm -hmm. Vernestra in the books and comics she's like a teenage jedi knight that's one of the youngest ones to ever ascend to the rank of jedi knight and to yeah. be one of the youngest members to get a padawan and, and whatnot so yeah and by now, now she it's years later so she by be, now it's yeah. years later and yeah. apparently her species age is slow so She's here in the. She looks amazing, and, she's and she she looks amazing. So I, I suspect mm. that I don't think she's gonna be in the show too often. I think she's gonna be a member of the Jedi Council, and she's gonna be like coming in and out of the show. But we'll see. Right. But yeah, but she has a purple lightsaber, and it's uh she can turn it into a whip. That's so amazing. I hope a, they do that. So there's a lot I, I, they have to. If they don't, yeah, it's a they waste. have they have to. They it's know a, they have it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so High Republic for sure has had a lot more variety in in the Jedi and how not only do they express themselves, yeah. uh, dress themselves, but also in how they uh, 
wield their weapons. And yeah. it's really it's really cool though because it, one of the great things about this show is that I think it's gonna pay off a lot of the stuff that we have been reading in the High Republic publishing stuff. Uh, but in a way that I don't think is going to be distracting for people that haven't read it. Because, for right. example, uh, right now for Phase 3, one of the uh, comics that came out is called Shadows of Starlight. And then in that comic book, they're addressing the fallout of Phase 1 of the book. Okay. And there they start uh, implementing what's called the Guardian Protocols. And in those protocols, it explains why... Jedi uh, lightsabers aren't as ornate anymore because they need to mass produce them because they need to just get weapons in the hands of Jedi to okay. do all these things. I it's just like they start. It's a lot. I mean, I won't go through all of the protocols, but it starts. You yeah. gotta start seeing in that moment why the Jedi of the prequels are the way they are because it's like these things that are, are kind of slowly transforming the order into how they became right. in that. And I think that. The High Republic, I mean, the Acolyte is going to pay that off even further to kind of like, right. you know, uh, shift the balance. And then, as you said, have lightsabers that where we, we see like yellow lightsabers and and then all of a sudden be like, oh, now it's kind of like um, it's kind of monotone now because now their connections to the force is a little more, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, standardized. So it's that's a long winded, I would yes. say. A uh, long-winded way to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that. That. Okay. <laughs> but I think, <sighs> but now, like, I think one of the interesting things is who is the acolyte, and is the acolyte the person at the end of the trailer? And I think right. that there's a lot of people that are claiming that it's Amanda's character, May was going to be mm -hmm. the acolyte because she's the assassin or whatever or the spy yeah. or whatever, however they describe her. A masked marvel, blah, 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 who isn't afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Jedi. Uh, so, But I think that's misdirect. I think that yeah. she is just going to be like a character that looks to be like the villain of the story, but it's going mm -hmm. to be the secret protagonist. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think it is going to turn out that uh, she's definitely going to be like the protagonist. I think there's going to be a lot of her finding her place in whatever scheme is going on. Um, I think it's going to turn out that she's being used somehow in this whole assassination scheme that's mm -hmm. happening and she doesn't really know her place and she's being more used as a pawn and I think she might discover her true powers and self throughout the season. But it's going to be hard because we know so little and, and I really like the line in the trailer about, it's not about good or bad. It's about mm -hmm. power and who mm -hmm. gets to wield it. So I think it's going to be a lot of maybe other groups resenting the fact that the Jedi mm -hmm. keep their mm -hmm. secrets to themselves and do not include, you know, maybe others that could be force sensitive or could have other special skills into the inner circle. Because wherever there is power, a power, there's always a hierarchy and there's always um, a fight for who's on top and whoever's on top makes, you know, the rules. So I think there's going to be a lot of politics involved. Yes, Star Wars is political. Um, in the backdrop of what is supposed to be this murder mystery thing that we're getting, because obviously murder is usually... A bad thing. You know, has a motive <laughs> behind it. So, yeah. <laughs> and it is often political too. So, uh, yeah, I think that might be a red herring. I still, I don't know what to think about that one scene in the trailer where there's like this shadowy person on top of a hill that we see reflected on the lake as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody has zoomed in on that and we get any more specific on what that person looks like. But I'm I sure think some nerd has done it for sure. <laughs> definitely. But I felt that scene made it look like that person is going to be pivotal in whatever is happening. Um, maybe not somebody that shows up all the time, but who is in the background kind of teasing us. Who are you? What are you doing? What is your role? Um, so, you know, I can responsibly speculate, but it's literally, it's a minute and 47 seconds. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know, but I think they really are going to keep us on our toes and maybe everything we're saying is completely wrong and they've double herringed us and it does turn out that she is the acolyte the whole time. Um, 
So I don't know. I mean, what do we know about the Sith in this era? We don't know anything. We just know that they're, they've been in hiding for a millennia. That's it. That's all we know. Uh, I mean, that's all I know as far mm -hmm. as far as I know. That's all I think we know. Yeah. So I can only yeah. speak for, for, for my or What knowledge. you actually know, not you know uh, the uber nerd somewhere that knows yeah. more information than us. I mean, in some of the online chatter is that it's Plagueis or it's Darth Tenebris or something like that. And I'm just like, I, I think that there's a big possibility that it, that Plagueis will be in some in, in some capacity because right. I think we still need to kind of tie this to well not this necessarily but kind of bring Plagueis back to tie him into Palpatine and the prequels. But yeah. I don't think that he will be in this season. If he is in this season, it's like towards the very end, and you they kill the acolyte. And mm -hmm. it turns out that it's really not the acolytes, like some it's a fake alite for <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. a better term, and then it's a, a post credit scene where his plague is talking to the real bad guy of the season or something like that, <laughs> being like, you have done well, my apprentice, or some shit like that. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I think it's going to be that. I think there's going to be layers, you know, because the Sith have to be convoluted. So I think it's going to be layers of who this is. I mean, the person in the trailer with the red lightsaber might not even be a Sith, might not even be the Acolyte might be an apprentice to the acolyte or something like that, you know, kind of like yeah. Dooku was the apprentice of, of Palpatine, but he still had Ventress as an apprentice. So I think there's going to be layers of yeah. that. And I think that here's going to be my spicy take, mm -hmm. my, 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 my responsible speculation here. I think that Carrie Ann Moss is actually going to be a bad guy. I think. So that... you think I was right in my initial, uh, understanding that i thought that no no <laughs> that i mean Karen i think she's gonna be one of the she, bad guys she, she's definitely yeah. a jedi master don't get me wrong yeah yeah, but, yeah yeah but she could actually be a bad guy behind the scenes but i think yeah. she's a bad guy behind the scenes because i don't know this oh, take your pick disenfranchised this, this with illusion the, with the order well, yeah. or something happened with her apprentice or better life take your pick something happened in the past and she's trying to either correct the mistakes of the jedi through the dark side or do something but i think that because for me it's too I think it's a purposeful casting to have Carrie Ann Moss play a character that, like, right now is ringing so close to Trinity and fighting like right, Trinity yeah. mm -hmm. and all those things. So I feel like the show wants us right now to believe that she is Trinity. This is Carrie yeah. Ann Moss. She is Trinity, the savior. And Trinity's, She's, a, good, and yeah. Trinity's yeah. a good guy and all that yeah. stuff. So I think this is the a one who switch. inspires the one. And without Trinity, there's no the yes. one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I think that she's going to like be a secret bad, the, the, not the secret bad guy, but a but secret a. bad guy. Yeah, bad guy. So uh, I would, I wouldn't. And in fact, I'm willing to go one step further. I think she dies this season. Yeah, I think she dies. <laughs> what is it with you and the killing characters? Well, I think that's the good thing about having a show where yeah, uh, yeah, everybody's know, life is up for grabs. Uh, there's yeah. gravitas and consequences to whatever yeah. is it might might and will happen to the show. So, because yeah. here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, there's the scene uh, at the beginning of the trailer where Master Soul uh, says, yeah. uh, "Close your eyes, don't you know? Your, yeah, it's your eyes like can I see you. balance, I see whatever, and then the one kid, I see fire." Yeah, and that girl, <laughs> uh, the internet has been saying that that girl that says that is Maeve. Maeve is that is that the name? Uh, yeah, that's May. In a flashback, I 100% okay. agree. I think that that's her in the past. And I think that she became a Master Souls Padawan before she left the Order. Okay. So now she's trying, to, she's trying to solve the mystery of what's happening to the Jedi. And she runs okay. into her so own master. So you think Amanda Stenberg's character is the child. She actually trains as a Jedi, becomes a Padawan of Soul. Yeah. And then somehow leaves the Order. Yeah. Or is kicked out or something like that. Ahsoka style. <laughs> worse, worse. I think she's worse, kicked worse. out. Okay. Okay. I think she's kicked out. Maybe she used the dark side once and they're like, oh, you're you're not good. So they mm -hmm. kicked her out and she's resentful, but you know, she still believes in the uh, ways of the Jedi and she's trying to solve this mystery because she's like, Oh wait, who's doing this? This is the this is the dark side. Dark side's bad. I still believe in this, so let me figure it out. And then she runs yeah. into her old master in that fight scene that we see the two of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they are like, oh, wait, we're doing the same thing. Well, you're my old master. I'm your old Padawan. 
Let's uh, let's join forces and figure out this mystery. Because you need me in the seedy underworld because I yeah. know the way there and you're still in your ivory tower in Coruscant. So we need both sides to solve this. So I think that's what's going to happen with her and him. And then Carrie Ann Moss might be the liaison that she has been in contact with to figure out who the acolyte is. But then, bam, plot twist. She's the bad guy of the season. I guess we're going to have to go back to this. <laughs> during the summer when we start watching this amazing show that I'm so looking forward to. When I'm completely I mean, it, wrong about it. Hey, no, so you've gotten some things in Bad Batch, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I, I don't think I my mean, success success rate has been that high, but yeah, it's I been I've pretty gotten good, a couple. I think. Yeah. Um, I think it's also interesting the choice of the title per se, because the Acolyte has religious connotations. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that it's kind of beyond an apprentice situation it's like an acolyte which is like goes further i think it it becomes more of a an obsession i would say and and we know that the jedi are kind of cultists we don't know so far how the sith are working because they're they're kind of weird too so could you imagine if the acolyte actually refers to kind of a crazy stalker light sided person who turns dark by their obsession with like overzealousness over what the order should be. Yes, I think become, I think yeah. I think that's gonna be part of it. Uh yeah. I think I think we're gonna see definitely some some something of that nature be a catalyst for how the Sith are gonna move the pieces on the chessboard through yeah some disenfranchised uh, Jedi yeah. that then is falling to the dark. I think that's absolutely true. And uh, another, this is not a hot take. This is more uh -huh. of a bing bingo card thing. Uh, as we said, there are characters that are returning from, in both directions, mm -hmm. right? Characters that are returning from yeah. the High Republic books or from the past, and then characters from, well, these are also the past, I guess, but characters that we see in The Phantom Menace that are, we know are old enough to be in the Acolyte. So, Gerald Poof, my man, Mr. Longneck, he's coming back. All ah, right. Mm -hmm. And and you, we can't forget... Yoda. Yoda. Mm -hmm. So, Yoda. I think uh, Yoda's coming back. Yaddle's coming back. And I hope that Yaddle, Yaddle is voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard once again. so good. After she voiced her in Tales of the Jedi. And yeah. I hope that they both, Yoda and Yaddle, come back as puppets. Yeah, come and they, they don't do the, the over CGI horrible thing that they've done sometimes. sometimes. And, yeah. But I, I think they're going to show up maybe like in one scene. And it's going to be like a scene at the Jedi Council. And it's going to be yeah. like this big, oh, we got to go to the Council. Bam, and they open it yeah. and they're there. Yeah, because you don't want to overpower this show with some like huge presences like Yoda and Yaddle. So. You have yeah, to be but, careful, like we've talked about before, when you bring legacy characters back into new shows. They have to make sense, and I think yeah, that the only way the that story they forward right. And, yeah. I think the only way that they make sense is kind of the same way they were used in in episode yeah. one. It's scenes in the Jedi Council, yeah, and sparingly, maybe one scene in the Jedi Council, and that's it. And yeah. I think that would be enough to make my soul happy, but. What would you, to kind of start wrapping things up, what else would you hope to see from this show? I'm trying to keep my expectations low and just, you know, I say that after like this whole rant of a theory, but you know, but I'm just, but I'm, you know, I, I'm welcoming this show with open arms and I, I'm looking forward to be surprised by it. So I just want to be, you know, have the, looking forward to all the twists and turns, but what are you looking forward to or what do you want to see? Yeah, so I am super excited about um, Wookiee Jedi, Kelnaka. So, <laughs> I mean, the character design looks so insane. Yeah. And we love us, a Wookiee, a Wookiee Jedi. I mean, so good. And and for the actor, I'm not going to say his name because I'll probably spell it wrong. Mm -hmm. Jonas? <laughs> yeah, Sutamu. I'm not going to try know if that I'm, one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Having, you know, been playing like Chewbacca in some of the newer iterations of the character, now having the opportunity to portray a Wookiee character that is, you know, 
original and just all his own so he can interpret it however he wants right. I, i'm really excited to see that and you know so so uh how's our what's our little boy grungy Gungi. Gungi? Gungi. Gungi. Well, I say Gungi. Gungi, we always pronounce Gungi. it right yeah so and we've only had this like youngling on screen so far as a wookie jedi so to see a fully adult uh wookie jedi i'm really excited about that in the um, books, in the books, we do have Buriaga, but I don't yeah. think that they're gonna bring in a second Wookiee Jedi. Second Wookiee Jedi, yeah. So that people get confused. I think, yeah, uh, Burry's gonna mm -hmm. stay in the books, and then Kalnaka will take care of the live action stuff. Yeah, um, I'm also really excited to see um Daphne Keen, mm -hmm. who was you know from Logan, Logan. fame, and yeah. And uh, his dark materials, which I also really loved. And I think we only see her character a little bit there at the end, right before they have to turn on all the lightsabers. And the character design, again, is also really, really cool. And we have no idea how, because she's a pretty big named actress. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see like what her role is going to be in the show, because I think on purpose, we see very little of her kind of letting us think that she's going to be a minor player, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, in general, I'm just, I'm kind of really, this is a more diverse cast than we've seen for yes. Star Wars in a long time. So, I mean, there's still work to be done, obviously, but it's really refreshing to see um, so much of it in one show that seems very promising. So I really want to see how that works into the dynamics between the characters and how they shape, you know, this era of Star Wars that we only so far really get in publishing. And a lot of us, like myself, who doesn't really have the time to read them, sorry, um, to see it brought to life uh, at this scale and with the skill that it looks like they're doing it and th with the respect that they seem to be giving to the era. So I'm just, I can't wait for the ride, honestly. I'm going to be stuck somewhere in the darkness studying for the bar and this is going to be my one <laughs> yeah, rail you come out yeah you come out of the cave the you come out of the cave like once <laughs> once a week like, oh, like star wars. i'm alive the acolyte star wars yes it's so. just a shame it's just a shame that it's only eight episodes i wish that... i know i thought it was going to be at least 10 to 12 and more yeah, like andor like, yeah but yeah eight hurts a little bit eight hurts I mean, a lot don't... because ahsoka was eight and it felt kind of rushed there at the end. Yeah, I know. And I hopefully feel Ando they... was just perfect. Oh, yeah, Ando was perfect. So hopefully um, the Acolyte chose eight purposefully. And there's a reason for it because they were actually able to keep it at that. Because I do think there were some things in Ahsoka that were superfluous and not necessary. So you could mm -hmm. have pulled it off in eight episodes if you were a little bit more i would say mm -hmm. sorry baloney um but i think you could pull it off depending on the length of the episodes and how straight you get to the point um you could pull it off because let's, let's think about bad batch those episodes are short and they pack so much of a punch in each episode mm -hmm. so it can be done if done correctly but bad so. batch is 16 episodes though true but they're short for like twenty something minutes. But uh, uh, Andor being the except being the exception, Mando, Obi Wan, and uh, Ahsoka mm -hmm. episodes have been on the thirty side. thirty minute, yeah. sometimes forty mm -hmm. minute side. So yeah, I mean they are you know they're they're not. And we don't have any idea about length of episodes. episodes for the Acolytes, do we? Not as far I don't as think I we know. Do. Yeah, but I would I would bet uh, thirty to forty five minutes. We'll see because it the acolyte gives me a lot of, and even if it's complete difference because we do have actual force users all throughout mm -hmm. this, so it's very different from Andor. But it felt it feels very boots in the ground, like realistic sets, realistic fighting mechanics. So I don't know. I I might say we're gonna have to wait till June fourth, obviously, when we get those first two episodes. But almost I there. Almost there. might hope for longer episodes. I hope so. But at least we have a two-episode premiere to yeah. look forward to. And it's only, well, today's April 1st when we're recording this. So it's only a little more than two months. And we're there. And we, and we made it. Acolyte Nation, we made it. We finally made it. Now we're so just excited. I'm so in excited. a countdown. So, yeah. 
I feel like there's really, I mean, we could speculate forever, but I feel like it's a good moment to stop yeah. for now and until until the episodes premiere and then we can see for ourselves and start diving what we're in for into the well of the acolyte. So, until next time, we are Triad of the Force. Like, subscribe, remember to comment. Let us know what you think Acolyte has in store for us or anything else Star Wars related. We would love to hear from you, so please let us know. And we will continue to be covering the third and final season of The Bad Batch. We release those weekly, so please stay tuned. And we are Triad of the Force. Mm -hmm.